welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Gareth Messenger and here are today's top stories. Unions and council clash in Southampton. And the unions will tell you all the time that all I want to do is outsource and externalise. Winchester student up for European award. 24 hour radio marathon begins. It's a no brainer actually, they have to tune in. And in sport, FA Cup action as Totten make history. But first, figures released today by the Office of National Statistics shows youth unemployment in the UK has reached 1 million. To tell us more is our news editor, Rebecca Gray. Some quite shocking numbers there, Rebecca. Yes, Gareth, this is a 17-year high and means that 21.9% of 16 to 24-year-olds are unemployed, the highest since comparable records began in 1992. Chris Grayling, the Employment Minister, has blamed the figures on the crisis in the Eurozone. However, the rest of Europe is just as affected. Spain's youth unemployment is currently around 45% and Greece is at 42.9% with the European average at 21%. Okay, Rebecca, can these figures be broken down locally? Yes, in Hampshire between January and September this year, youth unemployment in Winchester rose by 100%. However, in Southampton's test constituency, there was a 125% increase. Okay, thank you very much, for Re Rebecca. We will be bringing you more on that story as it develops. Southampton City Council has once again found itself in a war of words with local unions. Following a summer of dispute, the council is now looking to privatise local services across the city. Lewis O'Brien reports on the latest chapter in this ongoing debate. Southampton City Council have hit back at claims made by Unison regarding the privatisation of services across the city. The claims were made after the council announced they would have to save £75 million over the next three years. The plans are to share services with other local councils across Hampshire as well as commissioning services across the city to ensure the best quality service is provided. For the council, the argument has gone too far. Here's the difference. We have statutory and discretionary things that we have to do. The statutory, things like social workers, we've got to do that. The discretionary are the things that are, are nice to have, things that we choose to do. And the alternative, the labour approach, the union approach, is to get rid of those people, not cut their pay. The argument has waged on throughout the summer of discontent where the union strike, which caused chaos to services across Southampton. Well, I think council employees feel very negative towards the council. Morale is very low. People, if they, co if they could, would leave the council to work for other jobs. The council seems to be doing everything it can to make the situation for ordinary council workers worse. Now, the unions will tell you all the time that all I want to do is outsource and externalise. If that were true, why haven't I done it so far? The debate over privatisation continues. With the national strike on the 30th of November drawing ever closer, the arguments between the city council and the unions continue. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online, Southampton. Family members of a five-year-old victim cheered as a local paedophile was found guilty of sexual assault. He was convicted at Winchester Crown Court and sentenced to 10 years in jail. The judge described his actions as perfectly disgusting. Felicity Houston has this report. A Hampshire paedophile cruelly abused the trust of his neighbour in order to molest her five-year-old daughter, Winchester Crown Court heard earlier this week. John Barham, 54, was sentenced to 10 years in prison on three counts of sexual assault on a minor and two counts of owning indecent images of the same child. Both the camera used to take the pictures and Barham's computer, which was full of child pornography, were seized by the police. Family members, who were sitting in on the trial, cheered as Barham received his 10-year sentence. One man even said that that still wasn't long enough. Barham has also received a lifetime sexual offences prevention order, which will prevent him from contacting children, accessing the internet without supervision and owning a camera. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online. The price to park in Winchester is set to rise after the council agreed to increase the cost of parking in a meeting earlier this week. Lee Jarvis had this story. Winchester City Council is set to increase parking fees in all of the car parks in the centre of Winchester starting next year. The price changes vary depending on the car park and length of stay, but the majority of prices will go up between 10 and 20p, leaving car park users frustrated. Why increase prices if they're trying to encourage people to use it? And if I was cynical, I would think that the council don't want the car parks, the smaller ones, to be used because they'd be very 
useful to sell off and make money that way. The council has said that these changes are necessary and won't affect local businesses. They're not all increasing, uh, it's, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment in order that we can help traders and shoppers by ensuring that there's car parking spaces at the time that they need them for short visits to town in order to support the local economy. It's an adjustment through financing which, which is there to encourage people to change their habits. The rise will come into effect in January next year. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. Winchester graduate Shira Pinchuk has travelled across Europe for a prestigious awards ceremony. Her film Carrot has been nominated at the New Now Festival in Estonia. Hannah Keegan finds out more. New Now Festival is being held in 2011's European Capital of Culture, Tallinn, in Estonia, and Tony Dean is one of the directors. The festival is uh, aimed at uh, promoting the work of new graduates from art schools right across Europe. But I'm even more involved now because uh, the University of Winchester is the lead partner in a European funded uh, culture program funded project of which this year and next year the festival is the sort of central part of that project. A former Winchester journalism student, Shira Pinchuk, has been awarded the opportunity to showcase her film in the festival. My film, Carrot, um, is um, one of eight films in the festival. Um, it's about Israel, the Samaritan population in Israel. And it's very nice to meet other artists as well, um, like ex-students, just everybody here are ex-students. Um, and it's very interesting to meet other artists and um, other, to see other performance, other films. The festival will be running until Sunday the 20th of November. The University of Winchester is soon to launch its very own mobile application. The app allows you to access university functions such as the portal and even has its own planner. The app is expected to be available to students by January 2012. So we think this is app is going to be a really useful thing for students. And uh, to borrow a phrase I heard somewhere else, um, students tend to work anytime, anywhere on any device these days. Moving on to an update on Barton Farm, the Save Barton Farm group has asked for a city-wide referendum on the issue surrounding housing. The debate, which has been raging for years, focuses on the issue of developing 2,000 new homes. Yet these proposals are to take place on an area of open land which residents are fighting to preserve. And now it's time for your sport with Julie Cordier. Julie, I hear it's a massive cup weekend. Well, indeed, Gareth. AFC Totten were in FA Cup action at the weekend and for the first time in a club's history they were in the first round proper. Del Gorno was there to see if Totten could overcome Radford Park Avenue. AFC Totten reached the first round of the FA Cup for the first time in the club's history and Bradford Park Avenue were the visitors to the Testwood Stadium at the weekend with a place in the second round up for grabs. The early stages were tight and with emotions running high, Bradford frontman Richard Marshall saw red for violent conduct on Tom Bradley. Seconds later, Totten opened the scoring, Jonathan Davies firing home from a tight angle. The Stags were given a chance to double the lead from the spot when Nathaniel Sherbourne was bundled over. Mike Gosney tackled away the penalty. Bradford got themselves back into it, with some poor defending allowing Adam Clayton to fire into an empty net. The hope lasted only two minutes though, Michael Charles tapping home to reinstate the two-goal advantage. After the break, Gosney got his second and Tottles fourth after a pinpoint cross got him in behind Bradford's defence. Stefan Brown was brought on from the bench and it wasn't long before he got involved, Gosney turning provided this time. Bradford were reduced to nine men during the celebrations of Totten's fifth goal. Martin Drury gave in his second yellow card for descent. Stefan Brown grabbed his second of the game moments later when Bradford's defence was again exposed. Brown then knocked in his third, scoring the quickest hat-trick in the FA Cup from a substitute ever, making it 7-1 to the Stags. Totten won't finish there though, Jonathan Davies storming forward to notch up his second of the game. There were jubilant scenes at the end, with Totten running out 8-1 winners, setting up a tie against Bristol Rovers at home in the next round. After the game, hat-trick hero Stefan Brown told us how he felt. 
It's been great, mate. It's not every week you score a hat-trick coming off the bench, but coming off the bench and score, getting the win was the main thing. To be honest, getting to the second round, superb. And as you heard, FC Totten have been drawn in the second round of the FA Cup at home to League 2 Bristol Rovers. And of course, don't forget to watch Sports Week for extended interviews from the Totten match and highlights from Winchester football and rugby. Also featuring the Basingstoke Bison, where one of our reporters even braved the ice himself. That's all for sports this week. Back to you, Gareth. Thanks a lot there, Julie. Sounds like a very exciting time at AFC Totten. Winchester Sound Radio is beginning its largest ever broadcast in the name of charity. The show will feature guests including local musicians, budding sports personalities and the Mayor of Winchester. Tom Morgan went to see the preparations. Winchester University's very own Sound Radio will be broadcasting live for 24 hours. All the proceeds from the event will be donated to children in need. It's a really ambitious idea, I know, but it's for a great cause and children in need. It's going to be challenging, but above all, it, I'm so enthusiastic and it's going to be brilliant, I feel. This is a university that's proud of its Christian heritage and that translates into a real desire to serve the community and to serve charities and people in need. So it's particularly important that we do these sort of things. It's a no-brainer, actually. They have to tune in. We're obviously trying to raise money for children in need, but at the same time, we're obviously raising awareness for, for other people doing children in need as well. Be sure to tune in at www.soundradio.co.uk Well, that's been all for this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log on to winol.co.uk. From all of us here, goodbye.